So we are done with the optimization. Now we come to Hadoop. A story of Hadoop. How did the name Hadoop come in first of all? Hadoop is the name of a toy elephant that belonged to the inventor's son. All right. Basically what happened was Google published these three groundbreaking papers. Yahoo noticed it. <laughs> and Yahoo said, let's implement this stuff. So Yahoo started implementing it. And the person who was implementing, there were two people, Doc Cutting and Mike Caffarella. And um, they called it something. And then when they saw these names, they said, okay, let's just use the same thing. And then they they used the elephant toy, which was Doug's son's name, Hadoop. And they called the project Hadoop. So this was Yahoo Hadoop. So the story of Hadoop is, it's a toy elephant name. All right. And these guys went ahead and started a company called Cloudera, which is very popular and famous right now. And Hadoop went to public domain, Apache. Now, Apache has many, many projects, as you know. And uh, so this is now called Apache Hadoop. It's open source. So you can download it, we can download it, anybody can download it and use it. Apache Hadoop, and that's the, I, that's basically, that's the official symbol of Apache Hadoop. Role of Cloudera. Yeah. Or oh, they are just companies which are supporting. Okay. So basically nowadays, whenever you have open source software, you need support. Even though it is open source, you need support. Right? So Cloudera actually does more than support. They provide support. If you, if you found to start Hadoop today, you don't have any expertise. They will teach you classes. You don't have any other software that goes around it. They will provide you that software. If something goes wrong, they will come and fix it. So their support. Have you heard of Red Hat Linux? Yeah. yeah. So what does Red Hat do? Support. They have their own, <laughs> they have their own version of it, which is maybe a little bit ruggedized. They take the public domain course, code and you know fix few things here and there. Sell it to you. There's plenty of examples of open source support. So the world is moving in that direction is that the software itself is open source and we will have hundreds of examples in this lecture of different things that are required. It's all open source, but people support it. Some companies support it. But they are the leading companies because they were the first one to start. They were the people who knew Hadoop before anybody, anybody else knew Hadoop. So the answer was that Cloudera does have a version which has the core which is Apache, mm -hmm. plus something else to manage it around. If you want to, if you want to instantiate some, you know, map produce servers or masters and this and that, you need management. Mm -hmm. And that comes from cloud, from cloud era. Hadoop is an open source implementation of map reduce framework. And basically it consists of three parts. There is a common package, which are all the files we need to start Hadoop. Then there's a distributed file system, which is I'm going to describe in a minute. And then the map reduce engine, which I'm going to describe one more time in a little bit more detail. So now HDFS. HDFS is Hadoop distributed file system. Very similar to Google file system. It requires data to be broken into blocks. Each block is stored on two or more nodes on different. And then there is a central master server which is called the name node. Name node exactly knows where the blocks are and where the what the names of those blocks are. Names means if you have a file system, whatever it is, then you need to translate that into a block number. Once you know the block number, then you need to know which disk has those block numbers. So that is why you have two maps, a block map and a name map. Oh, it doesn't store anything. Yeah, it doesn't store the data. It stores only the map. There might be some minor thing, but uh, overall there is, this is the same idea. Okay, that's why they call it HDFS and not GFS. So the name node manages the file system namespace and keeps track of where each block is. And then as before, when you want to write something, you come to the name node, it tells you go here, this and that. All that goes on. You know, the file system is maintained as before. Now there are a few more nodes. So there are job tracker, so data node, job tracker and task tracker. Data node, basically are the are the workers those are the people who are doing the map jobs and the reduce jobs 
and they don't sit idle. They just go to ask the master, please tell me what can I do for you. Now, if they don't come and ask, then you know they are sick. <laughs> and so you have to replace them. But they keep coming asking and that is actually that those requests are also used as what they call liveness detector that they are live. So that is data node. Data node also have data by the way, right? That's why they call data node. Um, job tracker is the one that assigns the map jobs to the task tracker nodes that have the data or are close to the data or in the same rack. So task tracker and the node, uh, data node, they might be same. So as, as shown in this picture, they are same actually. Everywhere we see dn plus tt. So the data nodes are the data and the task trackers are the task people, people who are doing the task. And so generally they are the same and you will have many of them. And then there is a job tracker which assigns that it says, okay, you do this key value pair, you do this key value pair. So mapping is done by the job tracker. Now the task tracker, keep the work as close to the data as possible. So basically the task tracker wants to be close to the data node. And so as shown here, they are same. So anyways, now let's see, you have switches. You have job tracker, name node, um, secondary name node, and then there is a client node. I'm not sure what the client does. Probably it takes the results at the end. I'm not sure at this time. Okay, one more thing you should understand is that whenever we talk about any of these, these are functions, right? You can put them anywhere you want. You can put all of these in one node, one piece CPU, and you are done. But Job tracker is different than the name node. The job tracker's job is to assign the jobs, right? Name node job is in task is to keep track of the storage. So name node is a storage manager. Job node is job tracker is computation manager. You can put them all in the same CPU, but there are functions. Packaging is your choice. You can put, you can, on one CPU, you could create 10 VMs. One VM does the job node, one does the name node, one does DNTT, and maybe five do DNTT, and so on and so forth. You can do whatever you want. Or you can put all of them in one physical processor. You don't have to have VM. You could have one physical processor, which also does job tracker, name node, data node, everything. Right? In that case, you would not get any parallelism at all because everything is being done in serial. But um, if you divide this into pieces, you can divide any way you want. Doer, assigner, and basically computation doer, right? So basically, um, <coughs> the DN and TT, data node and task tracker, they go together. Now, Data node gets the data if necessary, do the map function and write the results to the disk. So their job is data node as their name says is basically try to get the data local. The job tracker then assigns the reduced job to the job data node that have the data close to them and all data has to be uh, has to be has has a check attached to it to verify its integrity. What that means is all the data has a CRC field in it. Right? So when you get a 64 kilobyte block, you can be assured that it is all correct because somebody has done this redundancy check. Now, Hadoop is a big family. Is a big family. Much of this family comes from Apache. So first you have the Apache Hadoop. When you get the Apache Hadoop, you get those three pieces we talked about. You get a map reducer, you get a file system, and you get the common package. But there are alternatives for the map reducer. The, another alternative is called YARN, Y-A-R-N. Okay, I was looking for the acronym for YARN and I couldn't find it anywhere, so this is just YARN. But I would think that this is yet another reduce something something. Y-A generally is yet another. Okay, but I'm not sure what yet another RN is. But, <coughs> but um, so that's an alternative to map reduce. And that basically, so they call it MapReduce version 2. Apache Mahout. Mahout. You know who, what is a Mahout? Mahout is this guy, little guy sitting on the top of the elephant. 
It's an Indian name, by the way. This is Indian word. <laughs> and I don't know how it got here, though. <laughs> so in Indian, in Hindi language, Mahut, right? Subharti? <laughs> right? Mahut is Indian. Elephant trainer. Huh? Elephant trainer. So that Mahut is, is a package. Hive is a package. And then there's a pig and so on and so forth. Now, let's go one by one. So Mahut is the, okay, I, I can see why, machine learning algorithm. So this is, this is basically, you know, a lot of mathematics in there. So whoever probably developed it must have, you know, whatever it is, you know, Asian, whatever national, Asian, this thing. So they have put this name Mahut. Mahut is machine learning algorithm for collaborative filtering, clustering, classification, all of the mathematics that you can do there. Hive. Hive is the data warehouse infrastructure. Okay. What is the data warehouse? <coughs> so data warehouse are the people who supply you data. Suppose you want to get stock market data. Where do you go? Okay. Yahoo is a good example, but I would go to Fidelity. Right? They have their, what we call, and actually behind Fidelity, there is some other company that supplies the data. So those are data warehouses. Those are where the data is stored and they charge you for, you know, subscribing this, right? So the, similarly, this is the data warehouse facility for Hadoop. You can get the data summary, you can get the query, you can analysis using SQL language like Hive QL. So this is a package. If you get that, then you can put it on your, um, you know, then you can just use it. People can use it. This is just the interface as a data warehouse. Big. Pig is the platform for, for creating map reduce program using a high level language called Pig Latin. All right, and similar to SQL. So now I didn't define SQL so far. Sorry, SQL is actually coming up later on. So I'm going to define it now. SQL is the structured qu qu query language. It's called SQL, by the way. Okay, you can call it SQL. You can call it SQL. It's a, it's a structured query language. So the old days, when people had the structured information only, they had databases called relational databases. They had a language using which you could manipulate those relational databases. Right? That language is SQL. So now that we don't have any more restructured data, now that we don't have need to use SQL, we use PIG with Hadoop, not with everything else. With Hadoop, you use PIG. And then you can extend this language by Java and Python, etc. Yet another resource negotiator. negotiator. Yet another resource negotiator, YARN, Y-A-R-N. Yet other resource negotiator. Um, Apache, Avro. Avro is the data serialization system. And the Avro IDL is the interface description language syntax for Avro. So basically, here's the thing. I am just putting one line. But if you go to the books on big data, there is one chapter on Avro, one chapter on HBase, one chapter on every of these lines that we are here. We don't have time for that kind of thing. So I just wanted to be familiar with the name and rough idea of what they do. If you ever have to do any of this, you will have to read those chapters. And I have given two references. One is, if you go to Apache website, they give you a little bit of documentation and everything else and download pointers. Or if you go to Wikipedia, they give you some description. Okay? But here we are just going to get by with one liners each. So now let's see if we can make sense of this. Avro is the data serialization system and interface definition language, IDL. <coughs> Interface definition language is the interface description language syntax for Avro. So that doesn't make sense, much sense. Basically, all it is saying is that they have their own language and you can serialize the data. So data serialization system. Basically, <coughs> um, when you have um, things, they may not be in key value pairs and things like that. So you have to convert that into so that you can then start giving it out to different um, map jobs, map um, servers or whatever. 
So that is the data selection. This is just manipulate the data from whatever form it comes into the form where it can be manip can be manipulated. H base is a full database, and this is a very famous database. So if somebody says you know big data, and if they don't understand H base, then they don't know anything. So basically, that's why these names are very important. You know, you need to know these names. H base is the DBMS, the database management system. It is non-relational. Again, I should probably put the relational first. The next slide is going to define what is relational. But this is a non-relational database part of the Hadoop project designed for large quantity of sparse data. So the good thing, the, the difference about HBase is, first of all, it is non-relational. Second, it is designed for sparse data. The, the other relational databases, which, are, which were used so far in the past, they were all designed for dense data, where every line, you know, every row had full all the columns. Here, some rows have some columns and and some rows are mostly empty, you know, with one or two columns. That is why it is called sparse. So this is designed for sparse data, it is non-relational and provides a Java API to access the data used by Facebook. So it, you know, basically big companies are using all this software. Obviously, since Hadoop was developed by Yahoo, they are using all of it. Facebook is using it and Amazon and everybody you name it, they are all using this now. Zookeeper is a configuration service, synchronization service, a name registry for large distributed systems like Hadoop. So if you have a 2000 node Hadoop cluster, you need something to manage it. Zookeeper, zookeeper keeps track of all the animals in the zoo, right? Cassandra is a dist another distributed database management system, highly scalable. So you can see on Hadoop, they already made two, HBase and Cassandra. Ambari is a web-based tool for provisioning, managing, and monitoring Apache Hadoop clusters. So this Ambari looks like, I, I was just thinking there is some overlap between Zookeeper and Ab uh, uh, Ambari. This doesn't say distributed, so maybe this is for a small cluster whereas um, uh, Zookeeper is for distributed clusters, you know, large clusters. Chakwa is a collection system. So we, we talk about data serialization system. Data serialization, it takes the data from here and makes it, you know, makes it into dividable parts in the collection system, but you want to collect the data before you serialize it. For that, they have system here, Chakwa. A scope for transferring bulk data between structured databases and Hadoop. So what is scoop? A scoop is Hadoop plus SQL. SQL is the data that you can use to, SQL is the language that you can use to get data from the old databases, which are relational databases, which are structured databases. Now you want to put them into Hadoop, you can use scoop. And this is somewhat, in some sense, there is some overlap with serialization and other things. So basically, you take that structured data and put it on the Hadoop file system, and that is can be done by Scoop. Uzi is a workflow scheduler system. So this is where the scheduling comes in. When you have 10 processors to run, 10 jobs to run, things like that, you schedule, okay, you will reduce, when will you start reducing, things like that. You know, I mean, it's, actually, they will start reducing only when the jobs finish. But even that part has to be scheduled as to, you know, who, who basically, you know, since there is so much parallelism, who will, uh, who will listen to whom and when they will start, so Uzi.